The following tests performed for the NTSB show two issues relating to the short circuit and arcing properties of aged aircraft wire insulation. The wire is insulated with Boeing material specification BMS 1342A, known commercially by the Raychem trade name PolyX. The wire was removed from a Boeing Model 747 airplane after more than 25 years of service. For comparison, tests were also performed on wires insulated with a tape-wrapped aromatic polyimid, sometimes referred to by the DuPont trade name Capdon. The polyimid wire is MIL-W81381. The first property demonstrated is the wet arc tracking resistance of the wire. On aircraft, liquids do get onto wires, whether from spilled beverages, leaking lavatory water, condensation, or moisture absorbed into salt or other surface contaminants. This liquid can lead to wet arc tracking, which is a process where a conducting carbon path is slowly built up over time due to low-level electrical discharges on the surface of the wire. This photo shows an example of carbon buildup on 81381 type wire. The electrolyte used for these tests was a 1% saline water solution. Wet arc track tests were repeated with laboratory waste known as blue water. The Safety Board investigation documented numerous cases of metal shavings on wire bundles and between strands and was interested in examining the effects of metal drill shavings on the wire insulation in abrasion tests. One test measured the damage caused to the insulation by the metal shavings during abrasion of the insulation. A second test recorded the properties of short circuits between wires that the shavings created. The wet arc tracking resistance test followed the Society of Automotive Engineers standard AS4373 4.5.9 method 509. In this test, a wire bundle composed of seven individual wires is placed in the test apparatus. The top two wires of this bundle each have had nicks put in the insulation so that the conductor is clearly visible. This represents damage that frequently occurs in installed wires due to environmental aging or physical trauma. These wires are connected to a 10 kVA 3-phase 400 Hz generator with 120 volts lined to ground. There are 1 ohm resistors in series with each wire along with a 7.5 amp aircraft circuit breaker. During the test, the electrolyte is dripped onto the bundle between the damaged spots and the two top wires, and the results are recorded with a digital oscilloscope. The first example was performed using a 1% saline solution that was dripped onto the area with a nicked wire insulation. The wire insulation type is Boeing material spec BMS 13-42A and the wires are 20 gauge. Soon after the test begins, pinpoints of light can be seen near the edges of the nicks. These are visible scintillations, or tiny arcs, that can slowly degrade the surface of the insulation. As time goes on, the scintillations become more intense and the surface of the insulation chars. The resulting buildup of carbon acts as a conductor on the surface of the wire. Soon, a larger flash of light with an accompanying popping sound occurs. As time progresses, the pops and flashing become more frequent. Examination of the oscilloscope recording of voltage and current from a flash event reveals a classic arcing waveform. The blue line represents the voltage between the two damaged wires as time progresses. The first cycle on the left shows a normal 400 Hz sine wave. However, the next cycle shows that the waveform has become distorted and that the voltage has collapsed into the waveform of a classic arcing event. The voltage then returns to its normal waveform as the arcing does not continue. The red line representing the current in the wire shows that to the left there is little to no current. 
However, during the arcing event, the current rises to a peak of 65 amperes. From the voltage and current waveform, it is easy to determine the electrical energy in the flash. We see here the power spike during the flash is 8 kilowatts. The total energy in this flash was 4 joules, which is the energy needed to melt 6 milligrams of aluminum, equivalent to a fraction of a paperclip. Damage to the surrounding wires took time, but was documented during these tests. In addition to transferring energy between wires, arcing has previously been found to generate radio frequency noise and ignite flammable materials. Again, as time progressed, the flashing becomes more frequent and intense. The insulation of other wires in the bundle are damaged until they also become involved in the flashing events. Please note that at no time during this test did a circuit breaker trip. A second bundle of the sample type wire was tested and had similar results. One of the primary factors in the intensity of the electrical activity during this type of test is the chemical makeup of the wire insulation. The next example wire is MIL-W81381 with a tape-wrapped aromatic polyimid insulation. This test was performed to provide a baseline as there have been much more wet arc tracking data collected on 81381 wire than any other type. The arcing in this case was much stronger and continued until the circuit breakers tripped and the arc stopped. Looking at the voltage during this event, one sees that the arc waveform is continuously repeated on each cycle until the arc is terminated after one second. The current in the arc rose to a peak of 120 amps and resulted in power peaks of up to 15 kilowatts. This is similar to the first example. The difference between the two is that while the PolyX insulated wire had arcing waveforms for one or two cycles followed by many non-arcing cycles, the polyimid insulated wire had arcing continuously for hundreds of cycles which can cause much more collateral damage. The total energy dissipated in the MIL-W81381 arc was about 6 kilojoule, which is enough to melt 9 grams of aluminum or the amount of metal in one or two quarters. Another factor that can affect these tests is the construction of the wire. In this next example, the wire used is BMS13W42-1-1. This uses polyax as the primary insulation, but in this case the insulation thickness is about one half that of the wire in the first example of polyax insulated wire. We see that there is a strong burst of arcing after several minutes of scintillation. The sample becomes dormant until another burst of strong arcing occurs. This burst of arcing is stopped with the tripping of a circuit breaker. The results of this test were more akin to the arcing in the polyimid example than the first polyx construction. The total energy was estimated to be 2 kilojoules which is enough to melt three grams of aluminum, or the metal in one penny. In the next example, we use laboratory wastewater from a commercial airliner instead of the 1% saline solution. It has been reported that leaks in the aircraft plumbing do result in blue laboratory wastewater dripping onto wire harnesses and that shorts and arcing have resulted. The bundle is composed of BMS-13W42A-8-1 wire. 
we first see scintillation, which becomes more intense. Finally, there are flashing events, which become more frequent. These results are similar to those in the first example in which the saline solution was used. A comparison of the electrical conductivities showed that the wastewater had a slightly lower conductivity than that of the 1% saline solution. This shows that the saline drop is a good representation of a situation that can occur on an aircraft. To our knowledge, this is the first time such experiments were performed using dirty laboratory wastewater. A second type of situation that we looked at was that of metal drill shavings that have been found on the wire harnesses of commercial aircraft. We looked at two aspects of the situation. The first is the damage to the insulation that can be caused by these shavings. The damage is highly variable and is affected by many things such as the shape and thickness of the metal shavings as well as the material the shavings are made of, steel or aluminum. Two other factors that affect the results of these tests are where the shaving is placed in the bundle and the motion of the wires in the bundle. Shown here are four examples of different experimental configurations used in abrasion tests. Each resulted in varying degrees of damage to the insulation, from superficial damage to the top coat to abrasion through the primary insulation to the conductor. In this test, two bundles are moved longitudinally with respect to each other with a steel shaving trap between them. In this case, the shaving was steadily abrading the insulation on several wires almost to the conductor as seen in this photo. However, before the conductor was reached, the shaving slipped to a new chafing location where it cut through the insulation and caused a spark in a few minutes. A look at the oscillograph shows that there were six different peaks of high current in a short time, but that none of these caused the arc to ignite into strong arcing as seen before. No circuit breakers were tripped and the shaving moved to a new location after the spark. Because there is so much variability in how or when a shaving may cut through and possibly cause a spark, it was decided to look at a prearranged situation where a metal shaving is placed so that it touches the conductors of two wires whose insulation have been pre-damaged. Again, there is much variability in the results depending on the exact arrangement of the wire and shaving and the thickness and shape of the shaving. When some of the thinner shavings are used, the shaving acts as a fuse and is evaporated before more damage is done clearing the circuit. In another case, when a thick shaving is used, the circuit draws enough current to trip the circuit breaker before more damage occurs. In other cases, the shorting circuit turns into intermittent arcing for a short time, causing additional damage to the wire, but a sustained arc is not supported and the circuit is cleared. The oscillograph of the current begins with a burst of high current followed by 50 plus milliseconds of no current. Several more current peaks are seen until the sample becomes dormant after 150 milliseconds.